Two thousand. It's two hundred. It's two thousand. <laughs> I'm so tired. Four times five is twenty, and then add two zero. You said you just know that one. Hold on. First, we're being too loud. Talking too much. I mean, more than the person I'm talking to is talking. That's too much. Also, two thousand what? Square. 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 Units. Units. Square units. Square units. Square units. Square units. I just put square. Oh, is that? Mm -hmm. I just put squares like in the whole. The word squares? Yeah. Good. The thing I was wanting to not hear was squared. Yes, squared. Not 2,000 squared. That's a whole number of number. That's not the number of squares. Right? Let's run through it real quick. It should take about five seconds. What's area? Like number of squares. On number of squares. Oh. Yes. How many squares fit in here if it's 50 by 40? Two thousand dollars. Squares. If we want squared, then what do we need? Uh, units. Two. units. We need inches. We need feet. We need something to say what kind of squares we're talking about. But until then, we can really just say squares. Or units squared. Just put units in place, like just a placeholder for whatever units it is. Okay. So two thousand squares. We have calculated the number of squares. Once we know what kind of squares they are, we can say inches squared or feet squared or whatever. All right, so down here, yes, Tim? 150 squared. 150, I'm just going to write squares, and then we're going to see it, it's right. All right, how about, let's get here. 160 squares, or unit squared, and this is the little guy down here. 12 squares. 12 squares. room to write squares, but squares, okay? All right, the thing that I want to show you is how this can help this, this, make more sense, okay? Uh, let's see, to start with, I just want to throw this up there, all right? Just a reminder of pretty much what we've already said, okay? There's 50 units along this way, whether they be inches or feet or whatever, 40 this way, 3 here, 50 there, 40 here, 4 there, and a 3 by 4, okay? Everything we've done here is just to calculate uh, the number of squares in each of these rectangles, right? So you just add all of them up? You count them. To, yes, so finding the areas of all of these and adding them up is the same as counting them. Counting them. It's also the same as, I thought you were making this point, Grace. Oh, I thought we were making it just one giant rectangle. If we did, what if we did? That's what I thought we were doing. Okay. If we did, scoot this rectangle over here, right? It matches up because they're both 40 on that side. Scoot this guy up here, they're 50 on both, you know, each side's 50 there, so they match up. And then this little three by four fits in there. Beautiful. Now, how long is this side? Uh, 78. Oh, yes. uh, 54. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 54, right? 54. How long is this side? 43. 43. So the area of this circle represents a multiplication of what two numbers? 54 and 43. 54 and 43. Okay. When we do multiplication like this, we're really doing all of these things, but that's not very apparent. You don't really see that when you do these steps, okay? Now this area thing is gonna be more useful than just this, but since we're gonna use it, we might as well do this. It's, it's a really neat way to see this approach to multiplication. There's tons and tons and tons of ways that you can multiply two numbers together, lots of different methods, that essentially count up and one way to think of it is all the squares, the count of all the squares that this rectangle would have. Right? Lots of different ways to do that. Have you, have you, have you, have you had world history? Mm, yes. Oh, no. oh, history. oh you, that is your eighth grade. So maybe yeah. next year, the year after that, you'll have Mr. Edgar, and he'll yeah. give you, he'll teach you world history, and he'll teach you something called the Egyptian method of multiplication, 
and there's another way to multiply. Okay. What it's really doing is counting how many things, and this way we could have to think of it as squares. Okay. Whether we think of it like this, or we think of it, let's pretend we're uh, ancient merchants in the marketplace, and we have 43 bags. Okay, 43 bags just all lined up. And in every bag, what do you think there are? 54, 54 grains or something. What? 54 grains apples. or something. Dollars. 54 grains. 54 apples. Apples, the whatever, right? Fine, what we have there, we have it here. And really, behind every multiplication problem, what we have are 54 43s, 54 groups of 43 things. Mm -hmm. 43 okay. groups of 43 groups of 54. Okay, that's not immediately obvious when you think about that, but those would be the same thing. Right? Take you back to the first day that you learned about multiplication, you might not realize it's the same thing. We can see it here in this area model. Whether we have 54, right, all along here. There are 54 units, okay? Let's call them all inches. 54 inches, okay? 54 what? 54 stacks of how many? 43 squares, right? 54 43s, or we have 43 rows of 54. Same thing, okay? Same thing. Okay. So what multiplication really is, is what's how do we figure out how many 43 54s is? That's hard to count up, okay? Uh, so one way is this method, which is the same as this method, really. Let me look at it this way, all right? Let's see what we do first. Usually we go four times three, right? Four mm -hmm. times three. You yeah, had this one on the, I had to do this at the end of class last time, right? This was like the middle multiplication problem that you had. You had three multiplication problems. Mm -hmm. so here's one of them. Four times three is 12. 12, but in this method we put the two there and the one there. Okay, well. Now notice four times three, that's the area of this little guy right here. Oh. Right? You know, right? Four times three. Well those are the those are all of the ones that you have. Right? right. What's a one times a one? One. One. So in this thing right here, which is we don't see anymore because I moved the triangle or the, the rectangle, there's twelve ones in there. Right? Twelve ones. If we multiply three times four, that's how many ones we have. We have so many ones. Then we actually also have some of what? Twos. <laughs> well, not twos. Four? Fours. Zero. So many ones. Read over into the tens. 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 Yeah, there's so many ones that we actually get some tens out of it. That's why we carry this over, because there's some tens, right? The next thing that we do, we're going to do four times four, right? Sixteen. But is it really four times four? No. Is this four? It's no, four times four plus it's four. Five. Is it four times four? Is this four? It's four yes. times forty. Four. Where would the four go? Four. Right there. Four times forty. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what it is really going on. What we do in this method here is we cover up the zero. We say four times four. Right. Four times four is what? Sixteen. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sixteen what? One square. Sixteen tens. Boom. Because we have oh. ones. And tens here. What's a one times a ten? Ten. ten. So we count up all the tens. Four times four is the number of tens that we get from getting. We have four groups, right? Four groups of forty. Forty. Oh, and then you add twos to get one hundred seventy-two. What? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. We we count up all the tens, and we have so many tens, right? That we're over into the hundreds now. Right. If I write it here, right, that's 16 is really 16 tens, right? That's 161. Okay. But this method is counting up all of the tens. We get 16 tens. Oh, but we had a 10 from before, from when we found all the ones. So we had so many ones that we had a 10, so we had another 10. It's a 17. It's a 17. It's from 17. So that's half of it. That's, well, not half of it. Steps. That's this part and this part counting the ones and the tens, but there's another way to get tens. The other ones times the other tens, right? The three ones times the five tens or fifty. So five, which isn't really five, it's, it's, 50. it's fifty. Fifty times three, right? Is what? Fifty. One hundred and fifty. It's one hundred and fifty. The way I asked it, fifty times three, one hundred and fifty. 
Well, five tens times three, that's 100 <coughs> rows. 15 tens. Right. Okay, but we don't put 15 right there. Nope. No. Carry it. We put the one up there, right? Okay, so now we had so many tens, we wound up with hundreds. One, one hundred. One, one hundred. Wow. We're only in the, ten, the uh, tens place right now. Ten times one is ten. We got so many tens that we got some hundreds. Okay, so this one, before the one represented, we had some tens. And now it represents how many hundreds we kind of spilled over into. Okay. So then we do five times four. Well, that's not really five times four. It's, it's, it's fifty times four. four five eight. tens times four tens. What's a ten times a ten? A hundred. We're finding how many hundreds we have, right? That's this part here. Okay. So five tens times four tens is twenty, or sorry, not tens, hundreds. We're finding all the hundreds. Five, five tens times four tens is 20 hundreds, right? 20 hundreds, 20 hundreds. That's crazy. So five times four is 20, oh, but we had one. We had some more hundreds left over. So 20 hundreds goes right there, right? Two, and that's a 12. That over there, because we had so many tens, when we added these tens together, we added some hundreds. One, three, and two. Two thousand three hundred inches. Of course, it's the same thing we get if we added these two thousand squares to these hundred and sixty to these hundred and fifty to these twelve. That's how many squares we have, two thousand three hundred and twenty-two. So this, this, if you can multiply these numbers together and have no idea what's going on, like what you're actually finding, what this number actually represents, right? Forty-three fifty-fours. And the way that we're doing it, when you do four times three, we're counting up all the ones. When you do four times four, we're counting up those tens. Five times three, we're counting up those tens. And when we do five times four, we're doing 50 times 40, and finding how many hundreds we have that way. We've got 20 hundreds of those. Right? Now this model is really helpful because one thing it'll help us to see today is fraction multiplication. Way the way that we multiply fractions, we see why we multiply fractions the way we multiply fractions. Okay? Now, I was looking at your tests, and some of you multiplied just fine. Some of you found common denominators completely unnecessary for multiplying fractions. Some of you didn't do anything. Some of you cross multiplied. Okay? And not all these methods can be the same because they do not produce the same answer. Common denominator, if you then multiply them the correct way, all you've done is make more work for yourself. When we multiply fractions straight across, which is nice and convenient and pretty simple, right? It's a lot easier than adding fractions, right? If you're adding fractions, you have to find common denominator and all that kind of stuff. Right? So multiplying fractions is pretty simple, we just multiply straight across, but why? Why do you just multiply straight across? We're going to figure it out today. Because you have a two-bit number on top. What's that? Nothing. We're going to see it. We're going to see it in this area model. Okay. But first, uh, I don't know why I have that up there. Okay. So if you, I just want you to do this real quick and see, you know, and then tell me what multiplication problem is just like 35 times 29, but in little pieces like we do in our normal multiplication algorithm. You can, of course, I'm not, as I said before, I'm not trying to get you to, hold on, I'm not trying to change the way you multiply numbers together. I'm just trying to get you to understand why you do the things that you do, right? My main goal here is I want you to learn why you multiply fractions the way that you do. But, we're using this area model, so you may as well learn it. Also, later, no, I'll just write it here. It'll make this the distributive property make a lot more sense. Right, we're going to learn it this year. And this will help us see why.
right, so how many squares do we find in this rectangle? 600. 600. This one down here? 270. Yeah. 270. 30 by 9. This one? 100. 100. 100. And here? 45. 45. So we do the 5 times the 9, we're counting up all of the 1s, because a 1 times a 1 is a 1, right? Yep. 5 1s, 9 1s, we're counting up 1s. We have 45 1s. A lot of ones, so many ones that we actually wind up with four tens. Five ones. And five ones. I could actually do this. I could do nine times five is? Four. Five. Five. No carry. Just the number that I get. Nine times five. There's 45 things, 45 squares, 45 grains, 45 apples, whatever you're thinking. Okay, 45 of them. Now, we can move on to, let's do it in the same order here that we would do here. So nine times... Three and nine times really thirty. We're counting the tens, and in this case, we're counting so many tens that we wind up with some hundreds. Right? Twenty, or sorry, nine times thirty, two hundred and seventy. Seventy tens and then two hundreds, right? Uh, seven tens. Yeah. Seventy ones. Right. Twenty-seven tens. Two hundreds, seven tens, zero ones. The thing is, if 9 times 30, I'm not going to wind up with any 1s, right? Because it's all in groups of 10. 10s, 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 10s. I don't wind up with any straggler 1s. See what I'm saying? So we know that that's going to be nothing less than 1 twice. Uh, here we have 5 times 20. Again, we're going to get the number of 10s. 5 times 20, 20 times 5. We get 100. And so we have writing it here. There's no carrying. Okay? I'm actually counting up all this stuff finding out how many of these things that I have. And lastly, 20 times 30. 600. 600. 600. So we have 600 of those things. Got it. So we can do it this way. No carrying. Not a lot of mystery there, which is good. Less mysterious math is the better. We have 1,015. 5, 11. We carry that one. We're going to do 1,000, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so if you're getting me, if, if in a few weeks from now, I can recall for you this picture, this kind of picture, where we take a multiplication problem like 35, come on now, 35 times 29, break it up into the um, place values, hundreds, tens, ones. Okay. Look at them as their own separate little multiplication problems. That'll make the distributive property a lot easier to understand. So good? Yeah, good. Yep. Make sense? Yep. Good. Something new? Have you ever seen that before? No. I've seen it not before. Nope, but Okay, here we go. Now, now we're going to talk about fractions. So before we can understand this multiplication thing, we have to understand what a fraction is. Okay. Now, I asked this in my second period class. They said, oh, it's 6 divided by 11. That's correct. It is 6 divided by 11. Uh, we can think of it as 6 divided by 11, or we can think of it as the number 6 elevenths. So and that's how I want to think of it, 6 elevenths. Okay, a number that is... How close to it one is it? Is it a lot bigger? Smaller. 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 Close to uh, half. Half? half? Over halfway. Okay. Over halfway. All right. Let's talk about what each of these numbers means. Okay? That's going to help us with addition and subtraction of, of fractions and also with multiplication we're about to look at. What does this 11 mean? 11 of something. 11 what, Molly? Um, the 11 kind of. One because if you had eleven of um, not the sixes but eleven ones on top of the eleven that would make one. If you had eleven of these elevens, yeah. you have one. Mm. One what? One. Mm. Just one. Just one. Uh, Bang. One, Bad. one. One thing, right? Whatever the thing is, you have one of them. Okay. That's part of one. So 
How can I show that with this line? Yeah. What this number mean? Add 11. 11 and 11 on top. 11 and 11 on top. Oh, not, it's not a line like this line. It's a line like it's a, you know, one foot or something. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you put 11 at the very end and 0. Or one at the very end, I mean. One. And zero. Yeah, zero. Okay. And then you go, and then you make like s eleven tallies. dashes or okay. yeah tallies, and then you put a circle on the sixth tally. Okay. Yeah, that works. Uh -huh. So first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and cut this into eleven pieces. is how many pieces it takes to make one. So it takes 11 of these pieces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 pieces make one thing. How many parts in the whole? So let's call this 11, the size of the pieces, the size of the pieces that we cut the whole thing into. What does six represent? Six out of eleven. Six, six of those eleven things. Right? Six of those eleven. Okay, so this is like how many? How many you have? Okay, you have six of these pieces that are the size eleven makes one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we suggest circle it. That can work. I'm just going to do this. Like this. Group here is six elevens. Six elevens. All right. So we're all on board. We have six of something. What do we have six of? Cookies. Eleven. Cookies. Six of eleven. Six. Eleven what? Cookies. Eleven, eleven cookies. Ones. Eleven ones. So we'd have six ones of eleven ones. We have six parts. No. Um, Six parts. Six parts of one. Like six slices parts. out of eleven, 11 slices. Okay, six pieces. Six, what did you say? Six cookies. Like six, six pieces. pieces. I don't yeah, eleven six cookies like slices, in one jar. And there's eleven slices all together. So you cut a pizza into eleven slices and take six of them, that's six elevens. Six of things, these things are what they are, they are pieces of one, where eleven of these pieces make up the one, the whole thing, the whole pizza, the whole line, the whole whatever. Six of these elevens. All right, step closer. Who can come up and use what we've learned this, the previous thing and show us four fifths? Molly, show us four fifths. Tyler, yeah. show us three eighths. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That I'm hearing? That's three. three. That's only three? One, two, three, four, five. One. That's four fifths. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, you're right. So just put it as one in there. Yeah, pick me. You just find his number. You're just going to be right. There. All right. Fair enough. That's four fifths. Agreed? Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Okay, four fifths. Four fifths of what? Of five. Of one. Of five. Of five. Of five. Of Of all. Of one. Of five. Of one. I'm going to go with pizza with all of them. Four fifths of one. Yeah, four fifths of one. Four of what? Slice. Slices. Four slices. Slices of the pizza. Of five slices. Of five slices. All right. Kyle, you're going to show us three eighths. No one. No one. Giant cookie pieces are the best. 
It would be helpful if they look about the same. Instead of just one on one, they just went over on the other side. I already hit that. You're going to hit this or you're going to hit this. Not too fast, though, it'll go crazy.
lot of those. Now we're going to see from just finding the area of this rectangle why fractions are multiplied the way fractions are multiplied. Okay. So, well, let's just mark it off. Okay. Let's just draw all of these like this. Okay. I'll even keep going here. <coughs> Well, these are not squares, right? These are not squares. <coughs> no, they're rectangles. Now we just need to figure out, well, let's first ask ourselves, how many of those rectangles are there? Uh, one. One. Oh, there we go. 40. 40. 40. 40. Just 40. these ones. Oh. Oh, 12. 12. How do we get 12 so quickly? Did you count them one by one? Three times. Three times. Three times. Four. There's three this way, four this way. That's when we multiply fractions. That turns out to be our numerator because that's how many things we have. Okay? Inside of here. Like we want to know how much of an area is this. Well, first, if we're talking about fractions, we need to know how many of those things there are, right? We talked about it back, whoop, back here. How many we have? How many we have? We have, well, in that case, six. But in this case, how many do we have? Three and four. We have 12. 12 of these things. 12 of these things. OK, 12. How many do we have? 40. How many do we have? 12. 12. How many do we have? 12. Okay, so stop saying three tenths and saying other things. Answer the question, how many do we have? 12. 12. Okay, 12. Cool. All right, now what was that number on the bottom? What did it represent? How much? Not what is the number, what does it one. represent? It represents one. one, the parts that make up one. Yeah, the parts that make up one. All right. Now, the one thing that we're making up, in this case, is this one square, right? This one square. Now, now, finally, those people keep yelling out a number that I'm not asking for, now I'm asking for it. How many pieces make up the whole thing? 40. 40 of them. 40 of them. Yay. But then you can simplify that. Then we can simplify it. But the thing that I want you to see is why is it that when I take 4 fifths times 3 eighths, do I take 4 times 3 and get 12, and 5 times 8 and get 40? That makes a lot of sense. Good. So we have 12 things, right? Well, because I have 4 things here and 3 things here. So naturally, I would have 4 times 3 of those things. It's, you know, multiplication, 4 times 3. 12 things. What are those things? They're the parts that make up yeah, the whole. Yeah, the parts that make up the whole, right? The whole thing is the one square. And it takes 40, clearly 40, because this took five things to make the one line. This took eight pieces to make this one line. So if there's five to make up this one and eight to make up this one, there's 40 to make up this new one thing, this one square. But oh, so what you're saying is the shaded area is what you actually have? Yes, the shaded and area then, is this. And then the whole area is what is out of it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So the shaded area. Now, like, there's 12 of them, and they're all that they should be, all theoretically the same size, right? What size are they? One by one. No. Millimeters. What size are these things? Squares. It's a little rectangles. bit vague. They're rectangles. It's kind of vague what they are. It's not like they're inches or anything. They're, they're not uh, squares, right? Nope, they're rectangles. What are they? Shapes. Squares. There you go. Yeah, the rectangles and stuff. Parts of one. Is How, there a yes, right? okay. What? They're parts of one. How big are these parts of one? Three. Twelve fortieths. One fortieth. One forty. Yeah, the one fortieth. One of these is, well, with forty of its friends, make up one thing. Make up one well, thing. Thirty-nine. 
plus 39 of them. Yes, right. Plus 39 of this thing. Maybe 40. All 40 of those things make up the one whole thing. All right? Somebody said that makes a lot of sense. I hope that's true for everybody. Okay? Yeah. Uh, it seems to blow my mind. <laughs> it actually makes more sense than yeah. I mean, you never see it in my mind. <laughs> that's good. It makes more sense. I want things to make more sense. Because this, when you learn it, it's good to know how to do it and do it correctly and, and not make a mistake, multiply straight across. And certainly there is a shorter way to do this. But the reason why it is equal to 12 is now hopefully makes more sense. Okay? Three now, we can simplify this. These are both divisible by four. We can divide. I saw most people do not really have a problem with this. Divide this by four. Ooh. Simplify yeah. this by four. So you get three tenths. Did, was that on our one of our was that on our test that question? No. That very question? I don't think that exact one was. Maybe by coincidence it was. Are, are you done grading our tests? Uh, I did just finish this morning. Can you hand them back? Uh, Come on, no. Quit I want to give them me. another once over so that I can know what I want to concentrate most on. If you want to see it, then I, I can show it to you later. I would like oh, yeah. to know my grade. I love to know it. Can Again, the grade's not going in the grade book or anything. It's just informational for me and for you. Oh, okay. It's just going to I want to see it. Okay. Uh, together to figure out why, like, maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't, but how can we make these four, or right, 12, 12 40 in the picture, how can we turn those into three tenths? The lie Simplify. Oh, make the squares bigger, I mean rectangles. Make these rectangles bigger? Yeah. How can I do that? Uh, well, I wasn't really thinking all the way through. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think I see it. How about this? The, do you see the factor four they had in common? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's try this. Oh, no. What? Beautiful. What just happened? The, it's the, the highlighter. Wait, what happened? Let's take this and make four, square, four rectangles become one rectangle. Yeah. yeah. Or, and we want to kind of work in this in this region here, so we'll just erase across oh, here. We keep 40 we still though. have four. Let's see if we can do that. If we can group them. Oh. In oh. <laughs> okay. Four of them go together. Four of those 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 go together. Uh, four of these go together. And four of those go together. Like they. There's none left over, right? We're able to group them evenly. Each of them is what's made of four smaller squares. Now we make one big square of four smaller squares. You see how that works? And now there's ten pieces that make the whole, and they're all the same size. Yeah. Yeah, and the part where the um, three eighths of four fourths of the made up, there's three of those squares. Right, three. I mean, right one, two, three of things that ten of them make one. Oh, yeah. Uh, what are we on here? 41. 41? Let me get those tests first. 